Hello. How are you? Today we are going to play Nonari. We're almost done. We d we just have the insane ending left. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. Finish a library. He gave me a message engraved on a card. That's a braille card. It looks just like the one you showed us earlier. So you had two cards. No, only one. Huh? What do you mean? I thought that card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it did. And those were the rules I read you. However, they were not the only thing on the card. There was something I didn't read. Well, perhaps I should say, there was something I couldn't read. And that was? Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell, and I activate your sister's detonator. It's a threat on our lives. Oh. Well, um... Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero Two? I don't believe she did. But doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? Yeah. To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. That girl. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the thing she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activate her detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs happy as a clam now that you're back. That's very true. I've decided I can trust you. I've decided to tell you the truth. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. I feel I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. And at any rate, even if he were, I very much doubt he would kill us. Why? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure of it. He wouldn't kill us. No matter what the situation was. <sighs> hey, uh, Snake? Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment? Yeah. How much do you know? Clover told me about... I see. The morphogenetic field in the experiments nine years prior. How the experiments had taken place simultaneously at two locations, one being the ship and the other being a building in Nevada. And the girl that died during the experiment. She told you all that, did she? Hmm. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains for us to determine is who did this and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals. There were four of them running the show. Gentaro Hongo, Nagisa Nijisaki, Teruaki Kubota, Kagechika Musashido. Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Nijisaki was his right-hand man and did the lion's share of the planning. Kubota led the company's research and development division. Musashido was their majority stockholder. It was these four people who planned the initial experiment. Hmm, let me simplify it for you. Hongo designed it and Nijisaki put it all together. Kubota developed the technology required and Musashido provided the cash. Huh, so it's Hongo, Nijisaki, Kubota... Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. To that end, they organized a top-secret team to assist them with their research. All in all, they gathered ten people or so. Those ten? ten completed their team. 
and they were able to begin the project. They named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The uh, vessel, I suppose you could say, for this control was the morphogenetic field. Huh. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Experiments with humans produce the same results. The more people who knew the answer to a question, the more there were who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why is that? How could it happen? Hmm. The answer is that the shape of the answer has been stored in a field invisible to the naked eye. And through that field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. That's essentially the idea behind morphogenetic fields. But that's just a theory. Can't bring yourself to believe it? Yeah. Um... Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. That's right. But I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people. Right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say one million people were to do a handstand right now. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstanding. Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. All of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes you believe in this theory. Do you follow so far? Yeah. Now, if there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, what would happen? If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Come on, there's no way. I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? Mm. A person who has the power to write to the field and someone who can read from the same. You could think of them as the writer and the reader or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Close enough, at least. Come on, that's just crazy. This is the evolution of Well, humanity. if you want to prove that, <laughs> then you'll have to test it first. At least, that was how they thought. That was why they decided to do we their experiment. We divide half the population into receivers and transmitters, and then we just need to get the transmitters. That was how the Nonary Project began. By the way, Junpei, have you ever heard of the Gansfeld experiment? Yeah, that was an experiment in telepathy, right? Be like away you like place a pair of subjects in separate really rooms. 
<laughs> Probably. Then you show one a picture and ask the other what they see. Interesting. I'm impressed. Yes, that is exactly correct. So, why did you bring up the Gansfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. Some of them, he found, had potential. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were kidnapped. There were nine pairs of siblings taken, for 18 children total. For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put into group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. The children who excelled at receiving were put in Group A. Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany. The other is danger. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? It may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. Are you falling asleep? That's where Hongo came in. They set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life or death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink and your brothers and sisters will drown. Those were his orders. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. All of it identical. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts found themselves in. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems the astronauts were dealing with. Once they found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to return safely. It was the same with the gigantic in Building Q. The children from Group Q had to use the power of Epiphany to solve the puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through like, the fields. Nope, they're not talking to each other ever. I don't know why they would think that. The children in Group A, however, they had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. That is the simplest explanation I can manage.
Huh. Hey, Junpei, Snake! How much longer are you two gonna sit around on those bony asses? <laughs> Get down here already! He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here, and soon. Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Hmm? Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought it was only 16. Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes. I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah, but are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. The sister's name was... Her name was... <laughs> her name was Akane. That was the girl who... died. <laughs> Akane Kurashiki died? Nine years ago? Then... It, who is Chun? No. No, 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 no. It's impossible. It can't be true. Akane isn't that uncommon of a name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people do too. It doesn't mean anything. It was someone else. Of course it was. It has to be. <laughs> Is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's nothing. I'm fine. Let's get back down there, all right? <sighs> I couldn't do it. Why didn't I ask? What's her last name? I just couldn't get the words to come out. This puzzle seems way too hard to solve, so I'm just gonna fuck it. Might be the books on the left. Hmm? To your left. This? Why the books? Uh, no, to your left. Right there. Those things? Um, yeah, there we go. I think it might have something to do with those guys. Get a chart from the drafting table. What? Where's the drafting table? Or did you not already finish this room? Did you not already finish this room? Nice. No? Here you go. Look in the middle. Shell's rank 5. That's where we're at. I don't know what's going on then. Keyboard and screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
but it has nothing to do with the books if you got all the light bulbs. Sure. Yeah, that's what it's saying here. If you have all three pop up books, it says Shield Break 5, you got the story segment. Wait. Yeah, you're right, number 6. The book. I just don't know where I am and am. Cut yeah, the one that says Shield Break 5. There we go, that should bring up that button. This is the next. Oh, the door. Did that just close on its own? Don't tell me we can't go back. I don't know. Let's see. Damn it. It looks like it locks automatically. Is there any other way out? Well, uh, there's another door over on the right. There's a card reader next to it. It's got a red light on it, though, so I'm pretty sure it's locked, too. But there is a card reader, right? Yeah. Then perhaps if we find a key card, we could open the door and leave? Well, yeah, that might work, but... Uh, hey! Wait a minute! Are you saying we're going to have to search through this room for one little card? Oh, man. All of this happened in 30 minutes or less. <sighs> Looks that way. No way! way for real? Much. Way too much. Well, we can sit down and wait to die if that's exactly. what you prefer. Maybe Zero gave them more time just because they got through the nine door. I rather doubt that, however. So it would be wise to start looking. I think only if, like, Zero raised the water level. Right? And none of the endings, you actually die by water level rising, so maybe it was just a bluff. Right? We haven't much time. Let's find that key card. Oh, and the Neptune key as well. We won't be able to get through the hallway without it. <sighs> All right, then. Let's begin. Problem. I was very surprised they just sat out there for however long this is taking. Okay. Get a chart from the drafting table. This is the drafting table. Okay, we got it. 
find a machine that has a wheel you can turn. Can I turn this? Same puzzle. Thank you. 
need to do that for a while. Is that 6 and 4? This was a giant wall of text. How are they supposed to do all these in 30 minutes? Oh, the next one, then you can make fun of me. Oh, 
two threes. It's asking for three on both sides. It's kind of weird. You have to make them equal. Any sense. Okay, now I got one that doesn't require three on both sides. Now I need the coffin one. As in this. around here.
<laughs> you like that solution? A picture. What the? What the hell is this? This man with a mustache on the right. He's the same guy we found murdered in the captain's quarters. He had the zero bracelet on his left arm. And the second man, with the glasses and a doctor's coat. He's the ninth man. The one with bracelet number nine. He died after he went into door five. But this guy, the one in the striped suit. Oh man, that's Ace. Yeah, I guess it is. No doubt about Seven, it. Seven, you're very incompetent. But... What does it mean? What is Ace doing in this picture? Not only Ace, the ninth man and Cap, too. And they look happy, like they knew each other well. Why? How? How in the world are these four men connected? You say Ace is in that picture? Yeah, it doesn't look like it was taken recently, though. Ace, the ninth man, and Cap all look about ten years younger. Ah, so the ninth man and the man you found murdered in the captain's quarters are also in the picture? Yeah. Is there anyone else? Or are there only three people in the picture? I'm afraid I can't see it. No, there's one more guy. He's got kind of long hair, he looks smart, but a little cold. He's the only one I don't recognize. Hmm. What's the date of the photograph? It doesn't have one. Did you look on the back? Back? Yes, the reverse. The other side. Huh. Praying for the success of the Nonary Project. With Nijisaki, Kubota, and Musashido. Huh. Then the four men in this picture were the organizers of the Nonary game nine years ago. That means Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap were all responsible for making it happen. But... I feel like I should be more shocked about this. It's almost as if that's just how things were always supposed to be. Why? Why am I not surprised? Ace was the one in charge of the Nonary Project, but... Why? Why am I so calm? It's like I already knew. Ah, of course. I understand now. Ace was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. He was the one who invented the game nine years ago. He was Gintaro Hongo. He was scared of a blind person. Ace is... the Hongo? I had my suspicions from the beginning. Like, how did he even know who Snake was? Yeah, you should've just thought... should've just thought that was Gimpair. 
because they would tell him apart by clothes. Their voices were similar. Too similar to be a coincidence. Oh, the voices. Act like a Muppet, Ace. That would have saved you. They acted like Snake, or said that he was Snake and Ace Blue. He said he was Santa. Oh, Santa. I could never forget his voice. It was the voice of the devil. I couldn't be sure, though. You just said you never could forget it. But you still aren't sure? After all, I had no way to check. I certainly couldn't ask him. Even if I had known, however, I would never have told him. has to take seven hours. Minimum. Even if Zero made it quite clear what would have happened if I did. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Huh? I didn't know that Ace was Hongo. Oh, yes. I suppose you wouldn't have. Nine years ago, you were in Building Q in Nevada. But Hongo was in the Gigantic with us. I know. That's why I didn't know what Hongo looked like. But why? Why didn't you tell me? I mean, I'm your sister, right? You could have told me. We knew his name, but in nine years we never Google searched him. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize for keeping this from you. But if I told you, Clover, you would have told everyone else. And if you did, then I would have been forced to tell them about what happened nine years ago. I had to prevent that. <sighs> hey, Junpei. You think I could borrow that picture for a sec? Sure. Mm. Hongo Kubota. Hongo Kubota. Hongo Kubota Nichis. Hey, Seven, do you? Shut it. Just just be quiet. I'm this close to remembering. Even Seven this is frustrated close. now. Hongo Kubota. Jumpy, you were only brought here Nichisaki to solve the puzzles for them. Masashiro. They're doing all the hard work. <laughs> Cradle Pharmaceuticals. No. <gasps> Shit. What? What's wrong? Holy shit, this is nuts. Um, what's nuts? I remember. Remember what? Everything. Everything? Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember all of it. My memory's back. I, I remember what happened before I got snatched. What? <sighs> Let me tell you what happened. Like Snake said, Ace is Hongo. From the right, the other three are Musashido, Mijisaki, and Kubota. Musashido was the man with the cash. Nijisaki was Hongo's right-hand man. Already heard all this. Kubota Many times developed the tell actual us. technical details of it. How do you know all this? Come on, man. I told you. I finally got my memory back. No, that's not what I mean. I'm trying to ask you why you knew all this stuff in the first place, before you forgot it. You really want to know? Of course. Me too. Hmm. This is going to take a while. Hell, man. Probably take me a good three days to tell you everything. Well, we don't have three days. Just give us the short version, all right? Short version, huh? All right, fine. Give it a shot. No promises, though. I'm a detective. It's a little awkward to say this about myself, but you could probably consider me a lone wolf type. I hold to my own code, because I think doing what's right is more important than doing what you're told. That's why I followed my gut that night. A slim lead brought me to the wharf. It was nine years He's ago. already heard all this. Ah. The wharf had been cold as fuck, and I could barely see squat. I was investigating a mess of kidnappings, all of them children. It all had one thing in common. 
A history of visits to one a hospital. And my investigation had after a little my sword tonight. So I headed to the war on the ship. This is the There's a bunch version. of movement there. Men in black suit. Matt, no doubt. I moved before I came out of Don't move. I felt drop. I could just I kept digging the comb. There was nothing I could do. Then sudden there was a shot drop. That was my last thought, my faith. <clears throat> I woke up on a damn it. I did a quick wear it. A smoke. A toilet. I had seen it. I'm in a cell facing the it was still I pushed him. <clears throat> it won't open. Not like I expected much else. Would be dumb enough to put me in a cell and leave it unlocked. Threw myself against the door a few times, but it wouldn't budge. I knew it. I gave up and made my way back to the bed. Hmm. Huh. I sat there for a very, very long time. <laughs> Who knows how long. Then, I heard a faint voice. The voice was but I was pretty... Huh? No. Huh. Where? I pressed my... No, that's not... Left. I hope. And there it was. The bed had hidden in air. I dropped flat on the floor and peered through the grate. I couldn't see shit. But I knew it in my gut. Hold up. But then what my inside man told me popped into my head. I remember when I wouldn't want to see shit in that air bed. It means people aren't using the toilet. Tonight, a ship, a ship is set, is set to, to take the children, children to a large passenger liner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I on that ship? <sighs> Didn't matter. All I knew, checked out the metal grate. <laughs> Could I fit? I stuck my foot. Then. <sighs> I finally got the damn sweat. The first bit or so. Why? I went for it. Massive set. Then. What? I wasn't sure what it meant, but then, almost as if that was a cue, I heard a mess. A bunch of. Damn it! What the hell is going I scrambled through the duct as fast as I could. I made a giant racket. I soon found a metal door on the left side of the duct. The kids were screaming on the other side. I found it. I yanked the handle and threw the door. What the? What the hell is? I couldn't believe what I saw. The room had a dome on top. There had to be about enough. The ceiling it was an upside, almost like a chip. I looked down. There they were. They all gawked up at me, suddenly silent. Scared of the room or me, I couldn't tell. Probably both. <laughs> Not like I can blame them running into a mug like this when they're already scared shitless. I snorted at my own dig at myself and turned to the kid. Don't worry, kids, I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. All of them stood there, frozen. Well, except one. He was a boy, slightly older than the others, in a private school uniform. Who the hell are you? He stepped forward and glared at me suspiciously. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. It looked like they relaxed some the second I got the words out. How are you gonna help us? Where's the exit? There isn't one. The doors we came in through won't open, and the door over there... He kinda cut himself off. I think he was considering something before he changed his mind. Anyway, there's no point. We can't all get out of here. If we don't get out of here, we're gonna be burned to death. Burned to death? Can't you hear it? That voice said the incinerator's gonna start up soon! So... So... The voice spoke again. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. They only had 15 minutes. I looked back down at the kids. Looks like a good 20 or 30 feet to the floor. No way I could pull them up. Too big of a distance for any of us to... What the hell was I gonna do? 
But then I got an idea. Wait right there. I'm gonna be right back. What? Where, where is he going? Are you, are you just gonna leave us here? They just got frightened again. I'm not the best at that kind of thing, but I try to reassure them with a smile. Don't worry, all right? I'll be back. I promise. So just stay calm and wait right there. Got it? They wait to hear them respond. I had to hurry. Well, as fast as it got cooked, didn't take me long to get back to my set. Still no way out of it, but I had a plan. When I got it, I dove back into the hole. Then. Sorry to keep you waiting, guys. I tipped out the doorway and dropped down a little. Back in the cell, I'd torn the bed sheets into strips and tied them together to make a rope. It was sloppy, but it got the job done. All right, just tie that around yourself, okay? I'll pull you up one at a time. Right. Huh. Something was off. There were more of you before. Where'd the rest of you go? The boy in the uniform answered. I let them go on ahead. We opened the number nine door and they left. What? You're telling me you opened that door? That's what I said. Then what the hell are you doing here? We couldn't go with them. Why not? Look, the only people who can go through the numbered door... He was in the middle of explaining. Incineration will begin five minutes. The wall shook a bit from the voice bouncing around. Look, that can wait, all right? Just get us out of here! Uh, right! Grabbed onto the roof. First one I pulled up was a girl with a ponytail. Next was a girl with a red necktie. Boy in a jacket came after him. He said he'd climb up on his own. Boy in the uniform at the last up. Like the other kid, he climbed up the rope himself. He looked pretty scrawny, but I guess he was stronger than he looked. He moved fast, but when he was almost there, we heard some knocking. Everyone looked at the door. It had a thick, square window set into it. On the other side, an angry face was staring in. God damn it! What's going on here? <laughs> Why is the room empty? Where the hell are those fucking kids? The door opened, and a man stepped in. I recognized his face. I saw the man's name was Gintaru Hongo. The CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. On goes to the boy hanging from the rope. Yeah! It was like he was an animal. See? Hurry! I know! The boy in the uniform book. You son of a bitch! Get back here, you little shit! Fifteen. Ten. The second I could reach the kid, I grabbed him. I hauled him up and tossed him into the dock behind me. Yeah! Hongo had lost it. His face didn't even look human. It was like the bastard pulled off his fake face. He was really a terrifying devil or some kind of damn monster. I quickly reeled in the rope, leaving a furious Hongo yelling at me from the floor. You fucking bastard! You won't get away with this! How dare you compromise this experiment! Experiment? What experiment? <laughs> Hey! Old man! What the hell are you doing? Hurry up! The boy in the uniform was trying to get my attention. I may have thrown a salute in the raging asshole's face before I closed it. I went to going back to the cell, so we went down the other direction. After about 30 feet, we came across another duct on the left. This one was heading down. I already nodded and took to it. The duct emptied us out into it. There was a door on either side. The one on the left was a normal double door. But the one on the right had black and yellow stripes. The device that played on it read, Incinerator? Yeah, that's where- It was the girl with the red tie who answered me. We were inside an incinerator? Yeah, Fungo might still be there. It looks like it's been shut off, though. Wait, what? If he's still in- Yeah, that's not- ah, That meant we better. We gotta get out of here. Go to the other door, hurry! Kids started running, and I was close on their heels. On the other side of the door was a large spot. Run! I didn't need to tell them twice. Up and up and up. Feet pounding, 
steps are on the fast. Round, 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 devils on the tail. <sighs> the stairway kept going. We passed a couple of landings when the boy in the uniform suddenly spoke. <sighs> Something's up. Akane's not catching up to us. Akane? My kid sister. The girl with the red necktie. Akane? I didn't remember seeing her in the list of missing kids. Hey! Akane! He kept his hands around his mouth and yelled. <laughs> Maybe we outran her. We're in the uniform still. I stopped too. When did we do that? Well, we passed a couple big rooms on the way here. No, that's impossible. Sorry, Grandpa. You keep going. You turn to go. Hey, kid, wait! I don't think the kid even heard me. Fuck! I spun around to the boy in the jacket. The girl with the pony. I'm going after him. You two keep... The girl nodded. Ran right almost... I'm going with you. <sighs> I didn't have time to argue. We ran all the way to the bottom floor. Oh, God damn it. Where the hell did she go? The experiment was only conducted on siblings. If Akane was in the experiment, she had to have someone with her. I could tell the kid was frustrated. And then suddenly... We heard a girl's voice. Akane! The boy in the uniform threw open the door and leapt into the hall. We rushed in after it. I couldn't for the life of me. That bastard Hongo had Akane by the arm. He was forcing her into the incinerator. Come on, goddammit! No! I don't want- She planted <sighs> Her brother roared with anger and charged toward Hongo. Before we could even blink, Hongo had leapt through the door after her. We saw him land inside. Then, the door slammed shut. We ran to the door. We did everything we could think of to get the thing open. But... We started slamming his fists against the door. He was close to shattering his knuckles with how hard he pounded on it. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? You Her voice was muffled, but all of us could hear the sheer tail. What did I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? He went out the other door. W what? Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration command has been... Are you fucking kidding me? It's the same damn thing! Are you there? Yeah, we're here. Just hang on, all right? We're gonna figure out a way to save you! His words would have seemed like a sick joke to her if she'd been able to see how white and bloodless his face was right then. Incineration will begin in... 17 minutes. Watching, so if you leave a comment. Hope you have yourself a good day. Signing off.